heating research poll conducted in Colorado's 3rd Congressional District between September 29th and October 2nd finds that Lauren Boebert is in danger of losing her re-election bid. Yeah. So Axios explains Bobo received support from 47 percent of likely voters, while Democrat Adam Frisch landed at 45 percent, making the race a statistical tie within the 4.4 percentage point margin of error. Seven percent of voters are undecided per the poll. Unaffiliated voters, those not aligned with the major political party, strongly dislike Bobo, who's known for her Christian nationalist rhetoric, opposition to bipartisan legislation and lightning rod remarks about guns and immigration. Those voters are shifting towards Frisch as the election progresses, pollster said. Quote, with Boebert under 50 percent, that means she is vulnerable to losing this race, Chris Keating, president and founder of Keating Research, told Axios Denver on Tuesday. Now, let's pause for a moment and try to contemplate what this would mean if Lauren Boebert actually lost her re-election bid. This means that the GOP would be forced to grapple with whether or not their party's far-right extremism is hurting them electorally speaking. It would be a political earthquake. To not have this extremist in Congress would be good. It'd send a message to individuals like Marjorie Taylor Greene and others that they're not invulnerable and the impossible could happen. But, not to rain on everyone's parade, I don't necessarily think that this is going to happen unfortunately keating is a democratic pollster although they are viewed as relatively reputable the problem is that even though there's a chance even though this poll is a good sign even though it's possible that frisch defeats bobo it's very very unlikely unfortunately and let me tell you why first and foremost colorado's third district heavily favors republicans usually and i don't think that Bobo is as much of a deviation from the norm, considering how insane and extremist other Republicans are. Sure, she's out there. Sure, she's worse. But is she bad enough to get them to either vote for a Democrat or not vote? I don't necessarily think so if history is a guide. Also, 538 gives Bobo a 98% chance of winning. So there is a chance to cite Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber. But it is a very small chance. Now, another thing working in her favor is money. According to Open Secrets, she's raised more than $5 million this cycle and has more than $2 million in her campaign coffers, whereas Adam Frisch, by comparison, has only raised $1.1 million. And I say only knowing that a million dollars is a huge amount, but compared to Lauren Boebert's $5 million, and politically speaking, this isn't necessarily that much, considering he now only has under $600,000 in his campaign war chest. Also, most of his campaign is financed by himself, and he has almost no grassroots support, which means that he's not doing enough to register new voters and create enthusiasm. And he's instead just relying on disaffected independence, which, as we've learned throughout the years, is not a very good strategy for Democrats. Now, Boebert is pulling in massive amounts of cash. The majority of her contributions come from from wealthy campaign contributors who are maxing out their contributions. So in order to even have a chance of beating this machine, you've got to have a really robust, well-oiled, grassroots political machine. And Frisch just doesn't seem to be organizing to that extent, extent because again, he's kind of relying on independence. So politically speaking, he's running this standard run-of-the-mill, milk toast Democrat campaign, and he's not really taking a bold stance on any of these issues. He's just running as a Colorado first campaign, trying to be seemingly or at least aesthetically, you know, right wing enough to perhaps court some disaffected independents who just don't want to support Bovert. But I don't think this is going to work in the end. Now, again, that's not to say that he is doing that bad because he has made a huge swing and he's now statistically tied at least according to this poll but i actually think that this poll is an outlier and i don't necessarily think that this poll has anything to do with frisch i think it has everything to do with bobo but if he were to turn this around and perhaps use this poll to galvanize supporters to you know get the national democratic party invested in this race perhaps he could ride out that momentum and do even better but in terms of him actually defeating her it is very unlikely unless as i said he changes things and he uh, he starts trying to appeal to a broader base he's really narrowly 
appealing to independents, but running a centrist campaign means that he's not going to be able to galvanize the left flank of the Democratic Party, nor will he be able to inspire younger voters and to defeat a Republican who can raise money this much in a very deep red district. You've got to bring out the broadest base of support. You've got to be constantly registering new voters. And he's kind of just coasting on momentum from self-funding his own campaign. So it honestly doesn't look good, in my opinion, despite this poll. Perhaps this trend will continue and he'll gain more ground on her. And the poll's good. Like, I don't want to rain on everyone's parade. This is a good sign, but it's still very unlikely that she loses this race. But we'll just have to wait and see. Would I like to be proven wrong? Absolutely. But the headlines on this particular one, it's accurate because they're statistically tied. At the same time, I'm not going to get my hopes up, and I recommend that you also don't get your hopes up. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.